This is the Sales Bible Podcast, episode 246. Using webinars to close a sale. An interview with Todd Earwood. Welcome to Sales Babble, the podcast that shares selling secrets for non sellers. And now your host, Pat Helmers. Hello, sales babblers. This is Pat Helmers. And I don't know about you, but I just don't have enough time in the day to do everything that I need to do. You can think about this onslaught of email and all of this social media stuff that we're supposed to be doing and phone calls we got to make and sales calls we got to attend. And of course, there's the, the, the never ending flood of follow up that you have to do in order to keep a lead warm and maybe convert into a client. So with all the technology that's out there, you would think that we might be able to automate some of this. And that's why I invited Tom Earwoods, the CEO of MoneyPath, to the podcast. Todd knows a ton about marketing and about sales and how the two need to work together. And what we're going to talk about is the marketing efforts of using technologies in marketing, such as webinars and how do you do segmentation, how to use polls, and all of that focusing on a very narrow niche to turn warm leads into hot prospects. So, with no further ado, let's get to it. Welcome, Todd. Are you ready to babble? I'm ready, Pat. Let's babble. Todd, you're in Kentucky today, Louisville, Kentucky, right? And you are the CEO of MoneyPath. What's MoneyPath? Yeah, MoneyPath is uh, really a consulting firm that may look and smell like a marketing agency on the outside, but really, we've got a group of experts that are here to help run marketing campaigns and build out sales funnels. Like it's all about marketing, helping sales. Yep. And, that, and that really stemmed from, you know, me building two software companies and knowing about marketing and being forced to learn about sales. And then once I saw the light, I realized marrying these two efforts together really don't need to be oil and water. We can make them become something special. Well, isn't that a unique idea that marketing and sales <laughs> should be working together? <laughs> it's ridiculous that, you know, marketers don't need to just be creative types, right? They don't need to just be copywriters. It needs to be this blended effort of how do we find the right customers? How do we educate the customers on what we do? And, and if you're doing sales right, in my opinion, you're just helping people solve problems. And marketing and sales can do that together really well. Now, now what is your background? Are you more of a marketing person or a selling person and or, or, or yeah. what? So I'm, I'm really a marketing person that's been writing code and always interested in technology. And then when I started building a, a software as a service SaaS company um, eight years ago, I gave a piece of my company away to a sales coach. And I knew if I was going to grow this, I had to get into the weeds, even down to the mechanical level of how to close and the takeaway close. And how, I mean, all the psychology of great sales and like, how do you build a good sales team? And, you know, Pat, it's really interesting. I couldn't afford this sales coach who is just this great guy uh, in high demand. And so I gave him a percentage of my company and he said, I'll agree to coach you, but it has to be after my kids go to bed and on Tuesday and Thursday night, I will speak to you on the phone for 45 minutes. And we did that for 18 months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until finally he did that little like Mr. Miyagi thing in Karate Kid where he kind of bowed to me and he was like, okay, you're ready. I have nothing else to teach you. And by that point, my, you know, I was, I was very, very strong in sales and now um, arguably just as strong, if not stronger than marketing. You know, this is a pretty common. I bump into this a lot in my consulting. People, people want to learn a little bit about sales. And after they're working with me, they're going, can you just do it for me? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, you know, the most important sales professional in an organization is the CEO. Amen. That's right. They've got the story. They know how everything happened. I mean, people want to understand what the company's really about, why it is, and why they can trust it. Absolutely. I mean, if you think about sales from the perspective, it's not this, you know, dirty, grimy, sleazy thing. It's not about selling cars um, and doing that. And in and, and itself, you know, my neighbor is a general manager of a luxury car dealership. And I, when you really start to peel back the onion, you see that they're just helping people 
Um, and, and I, again, came to that conclusion slowly, but it's this thing where we're all in sales. You're selling and marketing yourself to people you want to recruit to come work for you, right? You're selling your wife. This morning, I was selling my wife on, let's get the baby to not scream and yell. Let's try to do that together. And, and so I, I think there's, um, <laughs> and once you get into the weeds of how you can actually not persuade and manipulate persuasion is great you don't have to manipulate to persuade properly but you can you know engage with someone help them solve a problem and sales is a great way to do that now let's get to the focus of what this what this episode's all about um there is a there is a method that you've been using that you've been finding highly highly successful right that's right what is that I've turned to if you you know focus on the areas of marrying marketing and sales together. The number one thing that I found to do that is an old technology uh, with a new twist, which is webinars. And so we built this uh, webinar system called Webinar Works, and it was one of those things, Pat, where I was just trying to help my clients, and I ended up realizing this is my one of my go-to campaigns. And then HubSpot, we had a lot of customers on HubSpot. They said, what are you doing? Like the results on this are really, really great, abnormally great. You have to be doing something. And I realized there is a formula to it that our team had come up with. And then, I, you know, as I told you earlier, always interested in technology. I can't stop writing code. So our team built a tool where you could fill out a web form and outspits the PowerPoint and there's your webinar. So we get rid of that objection of it's too much work. But if you think about it, Pat, I I believe that marketers, again, if you're focused on sales, if you can hand a sales lead to an internal sales rep this, and say, look, this person spent 42 minutes, they were interested in this topic, they answered these poll questions, what sales rep's not gonna wanna follow up with that person? Yeah, that's a, that's a hot lead. That's a hot lead. Yeah, now, yeah, an ebook yeah. lead or the person opted into the email newsletter of the company. Yeah. Now that that's where marketers get frustrated, or really both sides, because the sales rep says that's not there's not qualified. How do we even know? Just because they got an ebook, there's not a lot of intent. So webinars provide great high intent leads. So how is this different than webinars have been around? I've been I've personally been doing webinars for probably 15 years. Sure. Using, uh, you know, WebEx and yep. Glance and <laughs> sure. Join Me and Google Hangouts and I, there's just any number of tech that's been you, that. What are you doing that's unique? Maybe you could walk us. Maybe you could walk the audience through your process. Sure thing. I, I think again, you're right. And like most things, Pat, I think you can agree it's almost rarely about the tech. It's almost never about the tech, right? So the strategy behind what we're doing with webinars is, is a couple critical parts. Number one, if you have an email list, I make all my webinars private. I don't put them on social media. I only convey this to an email list to say, I'm doing this educational format that you know is a webinar, and here's this narrow topic. So that's number two. One, make it private. Two, target one persona and make it so narrow in the content that you're going to provide that it repels away the other prospects that you might have on the list. You want to focus in on one target customer. Oh, I like that. Oh, so I, that way, I, I like that a lot. That yes. Yeah, yeah, so that way if you think about it like you 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 don't you you want you want to speak one to many in regards to getting the word out, but at the same time, you wanna target your content to say, if you're a hospital executive who's on the operational side and has a challenge with um, ER services, like that's a great webinar because those who don't have interest, if you're, you know, if you have a solution obviously for ER services, then that's a great webinar topic because the guy or gal in marketing or finance at the hospital who might be on your email list or in your CRM is not going to be interested in that topic. And they will self-select. In some ways, it's a great way to cleanse your list and find out who's who, especially if you've been around a while and that, and that list has started to age. Well, a downside of this might be when you host that webinar, only one person's going to show up because it's okay. so narrow, it's such a narrow niche. So, 
it, it is narrow. So a, a common mistake people are making is they and marketers, man, we are so guilty of this. We care so much about the metrics. And I, I'm a guy who just loves math. But at the same time, the real metric you want to think about, we've got to get out of this mindset of how many people signed up and showed up for my one-time live event. Because the tech now enables us to record this, kick out a video, and my clients are now taking that video and repurposing it into multiple different content pieces. And if you structure your content right the way we do with webinar works, it's really easy to do that. Can I give you an example? Yes, sir. Great. So one thing that we do, again, back to the sales psychology side, is people, as you know, Pat, will go to the ends of the earth to avoid pain. <laughs> but if you offer them gain, like they're not always so great about doing that, right? And so I, the way I think about this is we have a really a formula of the title hook around top five mistakes, top five pitfalls that X, you know, insert persona name, persona type, make regarding Y topic. And so that has allowed us to, A, give an interesting hook around a persona, yes. B, psychology around avoiding pain. I don't want to make mistakes. Of course, I, sh I should learn about how to avoid mistakes. And then C, here's the catch. We've had the top three to five mistakes the way we structure our content is we know at the end of this webinar, this is the beginning of our efforts. We're going to take each of those separate points, make separate videos, separate blog posts out of them. And now you're arming your sales team with a bunch of individualized content when they find that objection 18 months from now in a sales conversation. And then, Pat, you're the prospect and your, your objection to me might be that you don't have a, you know, you have a registration problem and, and you don't think I can solve it. Well, I'm going to pull off the shelf, so to speak, that one of my many videos, because I've been doing webinars, and I'm going to pull the issue of why registrations can be solved, and I'm going to send that to you in an email and re-engage you if you start to fall out of my funnel. That's really great. That's really great. I, you know, I do this a, a very, very similar thing here on Sales Babble. People reach out and say, I got this issue, and I'll go, oh, I got the episode, podcast episode for See, you. See, that's it. I've got that's an ebook that I wrote, and it's, like, no, and it's no work on my end, hardly. That's it. <laughs> Copy paste. It. So, you know, marketers, you know, you can do all these great things that I'm, I'm putting some air quotes. We can't see each other here, Pat, but I'm doing some air quotes. So, do these great things. But the reality is, if you want to do great things to help sales, you need to arm them with content in a way that they can segment it. Like, don't give me an ebook around 75 topics. Give me a snippet that I can throw into an email and send to a prospect. Give me a qualified lead and understand what qualified means to me on the sales side. And again, if you do this with the effort that we're going to be the growth team of marketing and sales together is really what this should become then you get this great outcome. Webinars just seems to bring these two people together at the same table. I got a great quote here you just said. Arm sales with snippet content. Mm-hmm. You have to because that's when you're a salesperson and you're talking to somebody either on the phone, through, through a WebEx, right, or over email in any capacity, I want to be armed with lots of different materials that I can grab and throw to somebody, but people don't want to read your 75 page ebook or white paper, right? What they will do is say, wow, Pat pulled out this, I have this issue, this one issue that I've been telling this, you know, the sales rep, Pat pulled that out and gave me this digestible yep. thing, yep. be it a two minute video that you pulled from a webinar or a one paragraph statement that you pulled out. That snippet of content doesn't have to be just text, but give something digestible to a sales rep and you'll sales reps will love you because they want all these things. But what they don't want is all the pretty pictures, the beautiful PDFs and inside that beautiful PDF is buried. The one thing they need. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So what's next? So, so where we were at, so, we were building these web, we were building webinars. Uh, we're building very, webinars. They're very they're narrow the and they're, re, mm -hmm. they're going to become reusable assets. They're going to be reusable assets. And then what I want you to do, that's, there's two things that you can do that the, the, the great people are doing today with webinars. And number one is have two people host the webinar.
just like you and I are talking right now, Pat, as interesting as we think each of us probably is, it's not that interesting to hear one person talk for 45 minutes. Yet that is what a webinar is today for most people. We have one person who says, hi. Matter of fact, Pat, a good example is in our camp, we tell people, are you Kevin Hart, the comedian, or Adele, the singer? If not, you can't hold the stage for 45 minutes, especially with no video. Like, you're going to need help. So we have two roles where now we're actually giving a performance. <laughs> it's a script. Like, role number one is the host, the MC. And, Pat, you're the thought leader. You, you need to be up there on the throne. The thought leaders don't come down here with us peasants and introduce themselves and say, let me tell you about how great I am. I'm wonderful. I'm exceptional. I won an award in seventh grade. Yeah. The spelling bee was amazing. Like, we don't do that. And if you think about that, that's what webinars do. They go through this silly format, or they do, you know, they do the silly thing where they say, you know, all the all the internet marketers are doing, the direct response guys are trying to do this, convert at the end, hardcore close. I, I don't think you have to do that. In B2C, you absolutely can close business. But in B2B, what you really need to be doing is educating the lead. You've already got a title that, you know, repels away other personas and draws in one you want to talk to, Right. And then after you've got this host and presenter mode, the host is going to have two things. That's the next step is have polls. They're built into every platform imaginable, all, and they're not hard. And, and a great example is on the first poll, you just want to get them literally pushing buttons, get them to engage, right? So you're going to ask them a softball poll that anybody can answer that is maybe even loosely related to the topic. So I have a client recently who did this and said he has an applicant tracking software company. And his first poll was, do you believe you need more candidates to get the right one for your business? And, they, and the poll answers were yes, no, is the Pope Catholic? And everybody laughed and everybody quit yes and Pope. And then he led this on to the whole, that segued into his content. And at the end, the host then did a segmentation poll. And Pat, this is where the sales reps will love you on the marketing side. What you do is you ask one of two questions. Question number one could be, again, you've already gone through your content. Before you get to Q&A, here's what you do. You say, of, the top five, of these five topics, let's say you had that top five mistakes formula, of the five topics, which one was most interesting to your situation? So now sales lead person, you know, when that sales lead comes through, the sales rep says, wow, they have that problem with registrations. I'm going to not talk about the 72 other features that we can offer this person. I'm going to hone in on registration. Right, right. right. The second thing you can do, and people, we're seeing like 60 plus percent of attendees live or replay will answer this question. And the second question you can ask is, now that you've been educated on this topic, what is your next action step? So now we're measuring the temperature of their lead. And so a common question would be, this is really interesting. I need to research more. That's not warm. I love this topic. I'm going to hand it off to someone internally. Great, but you know you're not getting the decision maker. I love this topic. I need to learn more now, right? Boom, that's a hot lead. Yeah. And by doing that simple thing at the end and attaching it to someone, because, you know, again, the tech has been there forever. It gives you crazy metrics of how long they've been there, what screen they looked at. All that's great, but we've got to tie that down to intent and what area of interest do they have to provide something great for sales. Excellent. That's brilliant. How do people take the polls if they're watching it on rerun? So I, I, the way my folks do it is, you know, in our system, we say, hey, build this out, do it live, Right and then build a web form poll, little radio button poll on the page of the replay page. And so, again, if you really get fancy with certain systems, you can make it appear on at certain time points of watching the video. I say hogwash to that, that's overkill. If you just put it there, you'd be shocked how many people, if you literally just put that on the page. Now, I wouldn't put the softball poll on the replay page, but I would put the other. And, and that again, you'd be shocked how many people will just click it by saying, here's the poll, here's what it is. Are, are you a fan of this, give people the illusion that the webinar is live, but it really was recorded six months ago? Because I've seen oh people do that. Oh, boy. I'm so glad you asked me that, Pat. 
I, I, it is so far away from what I believe to be a good idea. I can't even express <laughs> it. Um, I'll tell you an interesting story, Pat. I was, um, I'll tell you even the company name because I, I used to really love these guys. I don't want to get you in trouble. You don't have to. It's okay. Todd, it's I don't okay. want you in trouble, do I? <laughs> okay. There's a company who has marketing software. And it was over a Labor Day weekend that they had a webinar, which, by the way, you may not know this, but webinars are really great to watch replays or live over holidays. People are around. They may or may not want to be near their families. You'd be shocked how many people will watch uh, a webinar and stay attuned to it on the holidays. So I was one of these guys. This was probably uh, seven years ago. And I'm watching this perceived to be live webinar and i fell for it pat i did and i thought i remember distinctly the host was telling me about he should have had a host and a thought leader but he didn't know any better he had just himself and he was telling us a story about his grandmother's bread and how awesome it was and i mean it had an impact pat i can still remember it today and years later i'm at that company's user conference and i remember he had a very distinct last name and i approached him i said hey I heard the webinar on, you know, with your grandmother's bread and the whole thing. It was really interesting. It was one of the last things I did in your sales process before I bought. And he's like, oh, that's great. And I said, I can't believe over the holiday weekend you were doing a webinar. And he laughed at me. And he said, man, I wasn't doing that live webinar. That was a recording. And it was very deflating because I thought, hold on, you had a poll. And you told me that Frank from Sarasota asked this question. Why did, and then I thought, my gosh, like you're deceiving people. And if we go back, Pat, to that original talk, you know, conversation point rather around salespeople don't need to be manipulative. Like what relationship do you want to start with anyone professionally or personally that starts with deceiving? I, 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 I know what you, I remember once I got an email from a lady on the 4th of July and she said, Pat, I'm really surprised that you didn't take us up on that offer we gave you yesterday. I'm like, really? It's the freaking 4th of July. <laughs> and I go, I know exactly what's going on. She just stuck it sure. in some autoresponder system. Oh, yeah. Her active campaign email is just, it's just the day, third day That's after it. they log in, you send this email out. And I'm like, I just, so yeah, icky. It, there's it's no just need, icky. man. It's icky. There's no need. Like, there's actually multiple types because of the technology. You can do live webinars. You could do recurring live webinars where every Tuesday at 2 o'clock we have one um, if you have the means, right? Um, you can have the evergreen webinar, which is what re we really focus on. You do it live, but that content is not really focused on a time period, so it has more shelf life. I, I think that's good. There's lots of different types and of webinars. And people webinar. are good with that. People watch YouTube videos all the time, right? Exactly. On, on how to, like, fix something or, or, or another. They, I don't exactly. expect it. To, I don't expect, and, and if you're telling me right off the get-go that this is a really interesting recording we did once that you might find exactly. value, I, I, it's good to me. No need. No need to fake it. it it's only going to set you up to fail. And, again, you don't want to start any relationship with deception so why I, I never see a good reason to do it. When I see people doing it, I, honestly, it's it's just like, it, it's just it's just a weak way, a lazy way, of doing marketing because you think that oh I'll take advantage of the technology. But why do that? Because like you said, we'll watch YouTube videos. I mean, yesterday I couldn't figure out how to do something. The first thing I did was go to YouTube, how to blah blah blah. Yep. So, yep, yep, I, yep. I think there's no reason to do that. Instead. All you have to do is provide great educational content. If you provide that value to the prospect and you segment them with the title and you segment them with the poll and you've got a host that's engaging and keeping that audience interested in between the educational content, then you're going to have a great piece of content that's going to be repurposed multiple times and have a long shelf life. We've forgotten anything. Is there anything else we need to cover here? There's one more thing I think that's critical, again, if you're focused on the sales side, and that is segmented follow-up. So everybody follows up, of course, because we just talked about the high intent leads with those who showed up. But again, I want to stretch the, the value of this, the, the value shelf life to be much longer. You also need to follow up with those who you initially invited, who registered but didn't show up. And most marketers do that. But what I don't realize, and I don't understand why they're not doing, is that 
people are not inviting people to go watch the replay, even if you never registered. So I email the full list again and say, hey, Pat, you're probably busy. That's fine. Because I know by talking to GoToWebinar, Pat, they've told me that 20% of people have registered with the only intent is to watch the replay. They're never going to make the live. So go back to those people, again, to the full list that you originally invited that had no registrations, maybe never opened or clicked, and say, hey, here's a great resource that's a replay. Here it is. It's got the full functionality. You're being, again, honest, not faking that it's live. They're telling them it's a replay. And you'd be shocked how you're going to pick up typically another 15% of views in the next two to three weeks just on that email sequence. Again, we want to build that long value shelf life. I think segmented follow-up, just like anything, right? Pat, I mean, would you agree that segmenting the audience and speaking to their narrow interest is a good thing? Oh, yeah, it's going to like really it's, – it's, it's something that's facing them right now. It's, that's it. It's, it's, an, it's, a, no, it's a challenge or, or maybe a desire, but it's more likely some fear or something that they're, they're dealing with. That's they, it. They, they want to get relief. They want to get relief. And if your company or yourself provides that relief through what solution it has to their pain point, typically they're going to register and pay attention. And we, we all, you know, I think the replay is even more valuable in some cases because I don't have to change my schedule. I, that is why one out of five people are registering just to see the replay. Then use that content for the next 18 months if you do it appropriately. I think that's why webinars, again, it also helps marketers. They go, oh, this is what salespeople like. Salespeople need these snippets. They need these content. Great. My system just provides a content structure and educates the marketer around, hey, this is what's going to help salespeople. We're doing this, A, because it engages the audience, but B, because it's going to get more segmentation for the sales rep, and the sales rep's going to love it. And then guess what? We're not oil and water long term. Right. That's the goal. <laughs> That's the goal. Webinars just bring us together. Todd, how can people find you online? Uh, I'm everywhere as Webinar Works. Um, you can also find me everywhere on the internet. Uh, myself is last name Earwood, E A R W O O D. But you can see specifically, Pat, for your audience, if you go to webinarworks.co, not com, dot co, co slash babble, I've got a calculator there that will, you can literally answer 10 questions about how you think webinars should go and maybe how you've done them in the past, and I'll give you the shortcuts immediately for anything you don't understand about how to go do your own webinar and do all these ideas we're tossing out today in an easy-to-implement manner. Excellent. I love I love grade cards. <laughs> me <laughs> too. <laughs> me Goes, too. I love shortcuts too, right? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, give yeah. Me, give me something that's, again, narrow to me and my interests. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Todd, thanks for visiting us. Thanks for babbling here at Sales Babble. Pat, thank you so much, man. This was a blast. Trying to better utilize your time is a pain that all of us is probably struggling with. So if we could somehow use some of these technologies, like webinar technologies, to automate a little bit of the of the work that we do, a little bit of the follow-up that we do, think how much more productive we could be. To connect with Todd and to download his report card and to validate it against the webinars that you're doing, you can find the links to him and that link in the show notes at www.salesbabble.com. If you enjoyed this episode, if you thought it had value, tell your friends. Because word of mouth is the number one way that podcasts get shared amongst the internet. It's not through advertising or Google ads or Facebook ads or I don't know, any of the number of things, you know, flyers on car windows. Nope, it is word of mouth. That's how podcasts grow. If you got a question or you got a comment about something that we talked about today or any topic on selling, go to the website at www.salesbabble.com and click the Babble Me button and it will send an email. You'll find my email address and you can connect with me directly. And while you're there, you can look for our back catalog because we've got all kinds of episodes, all kinds of handouts on prospecting and cold calling and presenting and closing, everything you need, any kind of challenge that you might have in sales. Trust me, folks, we've probably covered it, and I've got an answer. Or my guest has got an answer. <laughs> Thanks again for listening. Hey, I really appreciate it. Hope you're able to put some of what you heard about today into action today. Until next week, take care. 
and have a highly successful and a profitable selling day. Thank you for listening to the Sales Babble Podcast. Find us at www.salesbabble.com. <laughs>